Followers of my blog and watchers of my YouTube channel may know that I've been somewhat obsessed with microscope projects this winter. And that's because I picked up this Bausch & Lohm stereo microscope on eBay, but I got it without a stand, so I designed and built that stand, and I also put a camera output on it, but I was still lacking an illuminator, and that's where this project comes in. Aziz, light! Much better, thank you, Aziz. So that is the infamous scene from the movie The Fifth Element, and when it came time to name this project, that just seemed like an obvious choice to me. You can see the most prominent feature on here is this dual ring of LEDs. So the outer ring has 32 8,000 millicandela diffused white LEDs, and the inner ring has another 32 25,000 millicandela super bright white LEDs. They're uh, spotlight style. And uh, driving those LEDs, I have a Texas Instruments Constant Current 16-channel PWM uh, LED driver chip, and that LED driver chip is on an I2C bus, which is driven by an Atmel AT Tiny 1634, and that's just an 8-bit microcontroller. That lives over here on the left-hand side of the board, uh, behind this white header and this encoder knob. And speaking of that white header over here, that is actually the in-circuit program and debug wire port, which allows programming and debugging of the microcontroller code. To provide a user interface, I've got two rotary encoder knobs, three tactile switches, and three LEDs. So you can see that it's mounted here to the microscope, and to turn it on, just hold down the power button, and you'll see that the LEDs have a nice slow ramp up to a medium brightness level. So the user interface is modal, and the function of the rear encoder knob is controlled by these buttons and the LEDs. So when the blue LED is lit, uh, the rear knob is actually controlling brightness, and you can see when you turn it back, it gets brighter, turn it forward, it gets dimmer. But the function of the front knob is actually fixed, and what that does is it controls the pattern of the LEDs. So it starts off with a basic pattern with all of the LEDs lit, but if you turn the knob, you'll see that there are uh, different illumination patterns that you can select. And each of these patterns is intended to illuminate the surface in a different way to help bring out detail. Many of the patterns can actually be rotated. And to do that, put the Aziz into rotate mode by pushing the front button. You'll see that the red LED lights up. And that changes the function of the rear knob to control rotation of the pattern. And you can see that the LEDs move basically in the same direction that you're turning the knob. And this allows you to position the currently selected pattern in the way that best illuminates whatever you have under your microscope. So there is a third mode that you get to by pressing the middle button, and that lights up the green LED. And this mode is called fade mode, and what it does is it allows you to fade between the diffused LEDs on the outer ring and the super bright spotlight LEDs in the center ring. So when you're looking at an object, you may find that, uh, say, dimming the spotlights and increasing the ambient light on the outer ring uh, improves your visibility of your object. Now you'll see that once I've made these changes, uh, the green LED starts to flash in the center. And this is just telling you that you're no longer at the default values. But if you want to get back there, you can simply hold down that middle button and it will return it to whatever the uh, program values were for that pattern. Aziz also has a soft off and you just hold down the power button. You'll see the LEDs ramp down and the device goes into a standby state, which you can see with that flashing blue LED. So to give some idea of the purpose of all this, all these patterns and modes and all that, uh, I rigged up the camera output that I put together a couple weeks ago into a video capture card on my PC. And you can see that we can look at the illuminator and also see the object that it's illuminating. And the idea is that you can see the effect that the different patterns and modes and rotations have uh, on the object. And we're going to be looking mostly at the labels on these chips, which is something that I have to do pretty often using the microscope. And basically, if you throw something under there with a typical illuminator, uh, there's no guarantee you're going to be able to read it. And if your illuminator only has a brightness adjustment, which is the case for pretty much all of the old school ones, uh, that really may not be sufficient to give you the contrast that you need. So you can see here that I have a pattern selected that allows rotation. And you can see that certain angles wash it out, make it hard to read, but other angles uh, really give you a nice high contrast view of the, uh, the markings on that chip. So we'll take a look at this different chip here. And you can see that 
just starting out that that label is extremely hard to read. I mean, it's partly the, the low quality camera that I'm using, but uh, I can't even see it under the eyepiece of the microscope. So I'm going to make some adjustments here, uh, try out some different patterns and see if anything uh, pops it out. And you can see that in this particular case, lighting it from a very small segment on the side and then moving the board a little bit to the dimmer end really makes that chip label pop and it becomes very easy to read that it's an Atmega 2560. So here's another chip on that board and uh, its label is also quite hard to see. So I am trying one of the rotating patterns here and moving it around. You can see the, the light uh, changing quite a bit on the chip as the pattern changes. The rotate modes didn't look like they were all that great. So I'm going to try this, this half illumination mode and try the trick of moving the chip off to the dimmer corner of the, uh, the viewport. And you can plainly see that that's a Cypress chip. So the Aziz really does work pretty well uh, for giving you an intuitive way to make lighting adjustments while your eyes are parked on the eyepieces of your microscope. And sure, it, it can take, you know, 30 seconds or a minute sometimes to get the lighting to look good. Um, but it certainly beats not being able to see what you're trying to look at. So you see here one of the raw Aziz PC boards as it came back from Osh Park. Uh, you can see that lovely purple solder mask color that Lane really likes. Uh, very good quality boards. But you'll see this extra thing here in the middle. Um, basically, because Aziz has a giant circle cut out of the center of the board, I decided to use that area uh, to put in a couple of breakouts and other utility things. So what I have here on the front is a breakout for a 128 by 64 OLED display. You can actually buy that on SparkFun. Uh, and I've got the boost power supply for that uh, on the right. The backside of that center section is a breakout for the Atmel ATtiny 1634, the same processor that I used on the main Aziz board. And the reason I did that was to hedge my bets. Uh, I had not used this Atmel part before, and I wanted a means of probing all those pins and basically just dealing with that tiny little MLF 20 package uh, in an easy way. Turns out now that I've got the chip working just fine, I can use these for other projects, which is pretty convenient. So here's a bit of uh, time-lapse footage as I uh, assembled the first prototype. Used some solder paste and hot air to do that MLF 20 package, but ultimately I had to clean it up uh, using flux and a regular iron. Used my solder paste dispenser to uh, dispense all the paste that I used actually, but in particular on the discretes. Uh, that uh, combined with the hot air tool is still my preferred technique for uh, any of those discrete type packages. Got to use the uh, dispenser a little bit more here, putting down these aluminum caps. And uh, I actually still prefer traditional soldering for those. I uh, just find it works better. like to bring the 3.3 uh, volt supply up also before I put other stuff on the board just to make sure that's okay. And for some reason I didn't drag solder this chip. Um, I had to clean up a bunch of bridges because I did it with hot air. Putting all these LEDs in was definitely the worst part of the job. Um, if I were to do it again, I definitely would have bought some of the standoffs that you can buy that uh, set LEDs at a fixed distance off the PC board. As it was, I kind of had to jury rig this arrangement with uh, some aluminum and a vise, but it worked out all right. A lot of solder connections, though. It's It's about 128 connections with all those LEDs, so... Uh, did some cleanup using my normal isopropyl and Kim wipe technique. That works pretty well. I'm very happy with that. Uh, putting in the last of the user interface elements. So these are the buttons and the uh, encoder knobs. Basically, I put the largest stuff in last just to make sure it wouldn't obstruct any of the uh, surface mount chips in case I had to do any rework. So the uh, source code for the firmware is up on GitHub, and you can find that on my blog at tangentaudio.com. And uh, next on the list is for me to build an enclosure for this thing. And I've started the CAD work for that. And I'll be doing the uh, CAM and CNC work soon. But uh, until then, thanks for watching. Take it easy.